Welcome to What the Flick, everybody. It is uh, Oscar Day, but we're not talking about that yet. Gangster Squad, uh, a uh, movie that I guess was scheduled to come out when? September 7th. L last year, yeah. September 7th, mm -hmm. uh, but the shooting in Aurora, Colorado uh, delayed it. Uh, it is out now, uh, heavily publicized. Alonzo, what's the story? Uh, so it is based on uh, real life events in Los Angeles of the late 1940s when gangster Mickey Cohen uh, ran the drug and prostitution rings of the city uh, and before he could become too powerful for them to get rid of him because he was about to uh, horn in on the gambling as well, uh, the chief of police puts together a secret cadre of LA cops, clean LA cops who are not already in Cohen's pocket to take down the mobster and run him out of town. And they do. Los Angeles is a damsel in distress. And I need you to save her. We need men. We're going after Mickey Cohen. Doesn't seem right. That he should have so much while others have so little. So, um, yeah, the scene they took out was a shooting at, at Grauman's Chinese Theater. And by all accounts, it was the best scene in the movie. Everyone involved with the film really loved it and it was really beautiful. But it's these gangsters coming out from behind the screen and shooting at the audience, which yeah, clearly we could not do. Have, right, have, right. Yeah. which required extensive reshoots so that the big showdown in Chinatown is what they have instead of what oh. that would have been. Oh, so they replaced it. They, they replaced that's why. the Chinese yeah. theater with, with Chinatown. Chinatown. So it's, it's thematically with similar. With Soldier's Crystal. But yeah, but that's why. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never know. Um, but yeah, that's why, well, that's why they delay the opening. But Folgers this. Soldier's flaked. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, but this would have sucked, I think, no matter when they released it. I think, you know, I, January isn't really a media thing. I don't thing. think it sucks. And, and I think maybe part of it is I, I think I did go in with a lower expectation because it's being released in January. Because mm -hmm. this is usually the let's sweep out the warehouse time of year. So if a movie yeah. with big names is getting dumped in the theaters after Oscar season, it's like, oh, man. But then for me, September kind of sucks, too. That's not um, a good time either, September. I, I thought that it was OK. I mean, it doesn't all work. Uh, there's a there's a specific way of doing that kind of 40s patter that this movie is really heavily leaning on. Like everybody talks like they're in a movie, mm -hmm. you know. And Sean Penn's really good at it as Mickey Cohen. He's good at it. I think so. Yeah. I think and, he's good. Okay. And Jamie, I think I think Josh Brolin is good at it. I think that. But on the other hand, Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling, who are a charming couple in Crazy Stupid Love, <laughs> don't quite get the language right, and so they felt too contemporary to me. They never. I never looked at them and thought 40s. Whereas other people in the movie. Maria Ennis, especially as as the wife of Brolin's character, she's really good. They felt, you know, kind of more period. And I think that Ruben Fleischer, who directed Zombieland and the not very good um, Thirty Minutes or Less, mm -hmm. uh, I like how he is willing to just sort of go there with the violence. In oh, a, in he a, goes there. In a major and he stays movie. there I mean, for a yeah, long he, time. Yeah, he really like <laughs> gets the most out of it. Like, like oh, there's one montage of, you know. Mickey Cohen's goons getting beaten up and his like gambling dens being blown up that is almost shot like a musical number. You know, the way it's edited it's to this sort of like period song and it's yeah, it feels choreographed. It's it's very stylized. It's almost like watching this sort of bizarre violent MGM movie for a moment. Well, here's what I don't know is it's so cartoonishly over the top that I don't know whether it's meant to be just stylish and outlandish or like an outright parody of a 1940s gangster movie. And that's a problem, when, it, when, when tonally you can't get a grip, grip of what you're looking at. It, I agree, it, it doesn't all work, and, and yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't have a consistent sort of through line. You're being awfully Please quiet. Please say something. I'm tired. <laughs> we've, we've, been up, we've been up since what, 3.30 in the morning yeah, you got up today? way yes. too early. Uh, so I mostly like, I, I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm split on this movie. Uh, there were times I laughed and I thought it had some pretty good bits in it and I thought that, you know, the, what's her name, who plays the wife? Um, Maria Ennis. Maria really Ennis, good. she was really good. I actually thought that, um, I, I wasn't so wild about Emma Stone, but um, I'm having a moment right now. Gosling. Can, Gosling, I thought Gosling's, I thought he sold the dialogue okay. Um, I kind of bought that he was a guy who could exist. I felt like sometimes he was trying a little hard, but for the most part, I kind of bought him at that, and I thought, you know, he is very charming. And, and but they're all just types. Yeah, I mean, but Josh they are Bowen's types. Like, like straight arrow type. Well, and as you said in your review, and you're not the only person who's mentioned Dick Tracy. And, and yeah. honestly, yeah. I mean, <laughs> Sean, Sean Penn. Penn looked like he came right out of the newspaper. Well, like he really, like <laughs> the to the point that faces. you kind of feel like, 
his suit needs to be more bright purple. <laughs> well, right? I, thought, I was thinking that he was like De Niro in The Untouchables. Okay. He's doing that sort of doing that. big, methody, like scenery chewing, kind of big well, over he the chews top. It. Oh, thing. yeah. But it, you know, and I think in both cases it works. I mean, it's, yeah, it's not a great movie. I don't want to oversell this thing. Uh, and, I, and there is a, a sort of queasy. Um, not even subtext, text of like warrants are for pussies. You know, like this is movies all about justifying vigilantism. All, vigilantism, like all the sort of worst subversions of you know justice and order to bring you know the for the for the means. You know, this is a movie but, I take it where that the the characters in it would disregard the uh, appellate court's ruling and stop and frisk. They're not, uh, for right. instance, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I, among other things. If you thought Zero Dark Thirty got into some questionable, you know, <laughs> believe me, this is so. I, you know, that but, part of it I could have lived without. But well, I just, I would sort of, I kind of went with so much of the style of it. I, you know, you know I, I was okay with some of it. I thought the music choices were really great. I did yes. like the music, and they and weren't it. like the obvious ones that you get in these movies. Right. You know? Somebody knows their '40s jazz, which yeah. was kind of mm -hmm. nice. Uh, but I think that you know, there's a better movie about a group of untouchable cops that take down the mob, and it's called The Untouchables. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a better movie about you know, yes. questionably violent guys in LA, and that movie's called LA Confidential. Right. So yeah, no, really it's not nearly as good as either of those movies, don't get me wrong. Yeah, and, and Emma Stone, if we're talking about you know, types in this thing, Emma Stone's just like pretty wannabe star. She looks fantastic. She has these great, beautiful dresses that are designed just well, for I, her. But, but it's a way to a great, great cast here. I'm sorry, I, go ahead. I, you know, I didn't see it, obviously, and I, I uh, but I got a question, because to me, even in the trailer, Emma Stone, to what Alonzo said, Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling look like they're dressed for a 40s party. Yeah. Yes. Um, like they're playing dress up. Yeah. And then I don't understand the line of, uh, I, it's, in the, it's in the commercials, uh, you know, uh, I, you want to play post office, and she says post office is a game for kids. Maybe it's not in the movie, and he says, mm -hmm. not the way I play. <laughs> what's, what's post office? It can get naughty, I suppose. What, what, with, with post office you would like, you know, like, it's a kids party game where you would like deliver kisses or something. Oh, to people. I don't know. It's, 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 it's like it's duck, spin duck the goose. bottle, kind of seven minutes in heaven. <laughs> right. Kind of okay. Of spin the government. Yeah. Spin but the bottle for federal this, workers' kids. Uh, then, yes, exactly. <laughs> for for it disgruntled. It does have this really great cast, though, that I think. This is a cast that seems to be able to kind of do a lot of different movies that aren't necessarily reliant on direction or story, and you're kind of okay just watching them. Uh, you know, Josh Brolin and Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling and Robert Patrick and Michael Pena and Giovanni, Giovanni Ribisi, and all these guys. Yeah. Like, you put them all in a movie together, and it's not going to be awful. Anthony it's like, Mackie. Uh, you know, it's... But it's boring and it shouldn't be. It's like See, alternately cartoonish but also like the violence becomes so numbing, so repetitive and so oh, I didn't noisy. Find it I did yeah. find it predictable. It's numbing it's, after It's a nothing while. special but I was never bored. Oh, I was. Yeah. The minute when they, you know, the minute, I don't want to give anything away, but you realize this, any, any movie watcher with any level of sophistication, the minute they point out that only one of the guys in right. the squad has children. Right. It's like, oh, oh yeah. Wow. All right. And there's another. There's <laughs> another, another he's not you want to think about another, this? You have a wife and son. There, there, there's yeah. another What's extraneous character who pops up early on who is like, oh, giant target on his back, mm -hmm. you know. And right. Right. so. Wearing the red shirt on Star Trek. Basically, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, numbers. 3.2. Uh, you know, I liked the period LA stuff. I liked its verve, even though it's, again, nothing special, but I'll say it's a 6.3. I'm taking a stand on this one. I'm going to give it a 5. Good for go. you. Mm -hmm. you feel good about yourself. That's 4.8. <laughs> uh, uh, Christy dragging it down. As usual, and, I and hate on stuff. On the tomato meter, it's about 43% right now. It's no, I dropping. hate everything. <laughs> Hi.